what's up guys it's your boy abadi back with another video some time back i've been showing you how to do previous data um or to show you how to keep the historical data of your modern but um i've been having a lot of comments from youtube and also on the website that postgresql or postgresql users are not able to follow the tutorial when it get to that point the reason is um, we were using triggers to keep the data in a separate table and trigger doesn't work with postgresql and some other database types so i have a solution for you that's what we're going to be discussing in this video so it's going to be working hopefully working for all database types okay so the previous blog or video is right here so the steps are almost exactly the same um if you get to video number 30 that's the one right here Django data update history so if i open that i have a very slow internet connection today all right so if i scroll down you'll see all the steps all right so right below the creation of the table this is what we're gonna do first you have to create the table this is what is gonna keep the data of your historical model okay so once you have the table you gotta do make migration and migrate i'm gonna link this video uh right below this current video so that you can follow it if you're watching it for the first time or if you're here for the first time okay so i'm not gonna follow all the steps i'm just reminding you uh what we've been doing and i'm gonna show you what is different from what we had in this other block okay so right here is where we have the trigger so this was what was doing the heavy lifting okay this was what was taking the data and then pushing it into that historical data all right so this is what we're gonna replace so with the postgresql users and the uh, sqli3 database users this was impossible for you all right so instead of using triggers i'm gonna be using a different method in this video all right so everything is exactly the same every single step the same except the trigger so now the trigger part is what i'm gonna show you right here if i scroll down you have the same stock history table that you're gonna create and you're gonna remove all the um blank true and no true you're gonna set them all to false all right i explained why we have to do that in the previous video we're gonna do make migration and migrate all right so now the trigger part in the previous one that's step number four right here we had to have trigger okay that is right here okay so in this order method we're not gonna use trigger so that's what i'm gonna do so we're gonna be doing everything in the views okay so right in the views is where we're gonna write this code and this code will be responsible for picking whatever data we want to have uh in a different table we're gonna have them right in the views okay so you don't have to do anything on a database side to copy the data from one table to another all right, so i'm gonna switch to the text editor to show you how this is done all right so like i said i'm gonna skip to this step and then proceed from there so before i do that i'm gonna show you on the um view side yeah on the view side i'm gonna remove this okay so this was what the trigger was using to know whether it's gonna do um uh it's gonna copy uh the receive content or the um issue content so i'm gonna comment that and then on the uh that is on the issue items view and also in the receive item views i'm gonna comment this as well okay so once those two are commented i'm gonna copy and paste what is needed uh in the new method that is this i'm gonna explain this sorry All right for issue items so i'm gonna paste this right in the issue item view just after that in standard save i'm gonna paste it right there and i'm gonna um indent it properly okay 
so what we have here is a variable issue history and we have this history or stock history table okay so if I get into the models you can see this is the table that we have here all right so now the content that we're gonna copy is this we're gonna, we want to have the ID the last updated the category ID item name quantity issue to issue by and issue quantity so that's what we're gonna keep in this history or the stock history table all right so the values we have picked with the trigger I'm gonna I'm gonna stop talking about trigger and focus on this right so now in the ID column or the ID fill what do we want to put in it okay we're gonna have the instance ID so whatever um ID that was passed in here in the form is what we're gonna ca capture okay and then um, pass it as the ID we're gonna set the last updated to be whatever was in the instance um here okay so likewise the category id we're gonna have instance of category id item name is gonna be instance of item name and so on okay so we're gonna do exactly the same for receive item so the only difference is here once since we're doing uh issue issuing of items we're gonna capture in the issue quantity issue two issue by and stuff like that okay so at the receive section right below the save I'm gonna copy this code and then save it or paste it right here do the indentation okay and once you um, specify all the variables and their values that will be put into those variables we will now uh, issue the receive history that save function all right okay so this is what we're gonna uh, do to save all these data that are temporarily saved in here okay so I'm gonna save it and then head over to the um, workbench so i'm gonna sign into this workbench and then turn off the trigger just to confirm that this is working okay so i'm gonna drop the trigger with this line right here let's clear this to be sure that it is dropped okay um right here trigger does not exist i'll have to confirm here okay um yeah so i've already dropped the trigger so if you want to confirm whether your trigger is dropped or still existing you're gonna check the database i have the database right here the stack mgmt database so you gotta expand the tables and then check for the uh stock um yeah the stock table okay that is this table right here in the models so this table is what you're gonna check and see whether the trigger was applied to it so that is if you've used the trigger if not if you don't use the trigger in the previous example you don't have to worry about what I'm doing now okay so if I expand the stock and GNT the stock table I'm gonna go to triggers and then check that there's no trigger okay so this will happen if there's a trigger right here I'm gonna run this call um okay so don't worry about it let's see i think the the trigger had an issue let's see um okay okay right here so this is what you're gonna have if trigger is running okay so if i drop it and then do a refresh the trigger should be gone Oh, sorry, I'm on a different trigger. Uh, I have it right here. Okay. Yeah, so I was working on some other projects and I forgot to switch back here. All right. Okay, so I'm going to drop the trigger. Do 
give a refresh and the trigger is no more applied so that's how it's gonna look if you don't have trigger all right so i'm gonna switch back to the text editor to confirm that we have everything set up okay so we can now do our testing yeah so i'm gonna go back to the application and do test and see if we are still able to keep um, track of what has changed in the database okay so i'm gonna go to the laptop section issue the laptop i'm gonna issue one the quantity i'm gonna issue it to maybe uh this person i'm gonna click save so we have we had 50 with previously but now we have 49 i'm gonna go back to home to this history and right here you can see the laptop is updated okay so we're gonna do receive and see if it's still working for receive okay i'm gonna go back to the same items and do receive i'm gonna receive let's say five click save and then go back to home list history boom we have five added to whatever was there before okay so that's an alternative to trigger we are also working on uh, the post application, a point of sale application. Um, that's going to be the updated version of this series. Uh, some time back, I um, made a poll on the community of our channel, and a lot of people um, showed interest on the post application or the post application. So we are working on that, and I'm sure if that is out, you're going to enjoy it. All right. And some time back we've uh, created a post uh, a poll on our channel and we listed out some of the applications that we want to show you how to build and most people um, showed interest in the post but the post application the parent of sale application and currently we are building that and it might take some time before we done with it because we're thinking um, we're trying to figure out what are the features that most of you will like for example want to include the multi-vendor functionality and we want to do some graphing in it so that you know how much uh, uh sales you've had in a day in a week and in a month and for each of the vendors we want multiple vendors to be able to log in to see their different um uh sale information that's going to be different from like if I log into the application, it's going to be different from what some other people are going to see when they're logged in. So that's what we're going to work on. It might take some time. So in these days, you will not be seeing me posting a lot of videos. So that's what we're going to work on. Okay. Once it is ready, you're going to be having a lot of videos related to that. Okay. So I hope you'll be patient enough to be able to wait for that. And I'm sorry if it's out, you all going to enjoy it. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, don't forget to click on that like button and send in your comments. Let me know if this has fixed your issue. And like I said, there have been a lot of comments on this particular topic. So I hope this helped you out. I'll bag you here and see you in the next video.